Our next guest was the first to expose secret government programs on UFOs. Back in 2017, Leslie Kane reported on the program for the New York Times. At the time, the Pentagon told her it had shut the program down, but that some information remains still classified. Investigative journalist Leslie Klain Kane joins me now. She's written extensively for newspapers and publications across the country on UFOs and the government efforts to conceal what they know. She's also the author of UFOs, Generals, Pilots, and Government Officials Go on the Record. Okay, after that very long introduction, Leslie, um, you called this hearing historic because the witnesses include not only a whistleblower, but other people directly involved in seeing things. What are you hoping to learn? Well, I'm, I, I think, you know, maybe we will learn more information from these three people than we have heard, than we've learned already. They have already spoken out publicly, but maybe they're going to bring something new to this hearing. But I think just having them in the context of a congressional hearing, even if it's not a, a lot of new information, it's going to be new to a lot of people. And it's going to be the context that really matters, which is a congressional hearing uh, which is an historic event. And we hope that it will lead to more transparency on the part of our government and more um, revelations as time goes on. There has not been a lot of transparency on UFOs or UAPs, as they're now called. You were the first to report on a top secret program five years ago called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, which studied UFOs and pilots' encounters with them. So there is a history here of the Pentagon keeping these UFO programs secret, right? That's right. I mean, the, I did report on that along with two colleagues, Ralph Blumenthal and Helene Cooper for The New York Times. And we reported on the fact that that secret program had been collecting data on military cases and intelligence cases, uh, not commercial pilot cases, but lots of military reports. And they've been studying the phenomenon and trying to understand how the technology worked. Uh, and, you know, a lot of that information is kept secret for national security reasons, Elizabeth, because, we, you know, to, if we are learning about this technology, we don't want our adversaries to understand how it works. We want to keep that to ourselves because it's very powerful and very sophisticated. But I do think it's time that the public is, should be allowed to know what some of the basic facts are, just the fact that the objects are real. And if indeed we do possess an intact craft, as has been reported by whistleblower David Grush, right. uh, I believe that's something that we can also share with the public. The program that you reported on was started in 2007. The Pentagon only acknowledged its existence 10 years later in 2017. How did the military keep it a secret for so long and why? Is it just to protect, you know, secret, as you said, like, oh, my gosh, we've got things we can use against other people and other countries? Yeah, I mean, it was a very small program. It actually was an offshoot of another program that started in 2007. It really started more around 2010. But it was very small, Elizabeth, and there are many programs within the Pentagon. It's a massive bureaucracy that are kept secret. It was just, it, it wasn't that difficult for them to do that. The only reason it became public was because the head of the program, Luis Elizondo, resigned in 2017 and just decided to take it out into the public. Otherwise, we may not have heard anything about it, and we may not be even having had congressional hearings as we've been doing. It was, the, it was his resignation that, that led to everything that's happening now. Right, but the yeah. point being that a lot of people said after David Grush came out and said there's a secret program and they have, you know, spacecraft of non-human origin, people were like, there's no secret program. The fact of the matter is there are lots of secret programs and they are funded by something called right. black money, which are funds that are not allocated with any public debate. And the kind of programs that David Grush is talking about are very different than the one we, you were talking about at the Pentagon. I think, yeah, they're, they're just that was a small group of people, but that was not a special access program. It was not a classified program at the level of the ones that Grush is talking about, which possess these physical materials. They're right. very different. Right. And this would be a much bigger yeah. deal. Um, much bigger deal. Military program yeah. studying UFOs goes back even further, of course, to, you know, to the 1950s to Project Blue, Bro Blue Book right? Correct. I mean, that's not, that wasn't, that was an Air Force program and it was really more like a public relations operation. Mm -hmm. So that was not a secret program at all. That was set up so that the public could report sightings to a body at the Air Force. It was a way of collecting reports from the public and then looking into them. But basically it was also a way of dismissing them and, and even ridiculing them and trying to get people to disengage 
because the Air Force didn't have any way of explaining what was going on at that, in those days. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.